What's up, everyone? Welcome to the 444th episode of the Pokemon Podcast. It's super effective. I don't think there's a joke with 444 like there is with like 777 or 666. I'm your host, Those SB Is jokes. there a joke with 777? You've, you've misunderstood what the meaning of the word joke is. <laughs> I mean, it's not a good joke if that's... Jokes, memes, references, maybe, is what I was looking for. <laughs> Greg is here <laughs> on the 444th episode four, of this. 444. Four, four, four. The great number 444 four, four, as written in the thing. Matt, how many how? trainers Wh- in Sword and Shield did their trainer ID as 444? 50? I don't know. <laughs> out of no, six, that's, out of that's like a triple <laughs> unlucky number. Out of the 16 million copies sold, only 50 selected 444. Four, four. <laughs> Yeah, because four is a is a is not fortune number. That's a bad number. According to the internet, four 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 is the number of protection and encouragement. It depends on what culture you're in, I suppose. Uh, sure. Will is here. I <laughs> please everyone b- buckle into your chairs. Oh, I boy. have two. I'm buckled. one small announcement, one large announcement to make. To, so prepare yourself. Here we go. Number one, we received a complaint that there's not enough swearing on this program. So, forsooth, there, I have sworn. Oh, zounds. Zounds. <laughs> zounds. How doth thee. Uh, odds bodkin. <laughs> Odd bodkin. Star, oh, my stars Second, and, and this is much more important. Who we actually have- complained? It's somebody in the Slack. Was it a one-star uh, review? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> one star. Wait, stop. No swears. Wait. We have a national crisis on our hands, and I need anyone within the hearing sound of my voice to respond. At your local supermarket, there is currently a product called Mountain Dew Major Melon. Get this off the shelves and i don't mean by buying it it is horrible it's horrible i did buy a 12 pack i've drunk one and i like regret everything that in my life that has led up to this moment it is oh my there's no redeeming this awful excuse for a soda well yeah what 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 about the packaging made you think i want to buy this i uh, (sighs) I mean, it I, looks, it, the packaging looks like I, chaos. So you was, just know it's going to be chaos in your mouth. I was hungry. <laughs> I was Please not thinking say that clearly. Again. <laughs> I normally get Diet Pepsi, and I was like, I need a week off from Diet Pepsi, but I need a caffeinated soda. I know Mountain Dew has the most caffeine of any soda, but I just, I don't like regular Mountain Dew flavor. I was like, let me try. Not only have they branded this Major Melon in regular sugar full, you can get Major Melon Zero Sugar. I was like, this is a calling out to me. I I don't want Dr. Pepper. No. And yet... I mean, Dr. Pepper is the greatest drink. So I don't know why you even said that. uh, No, Mr. Pip is the greatest drink. I would have been better Mr. served to buy caffeine pills and crush them into my bubbly. Mm. It would have mm-hmm. been the the wiser choice. Isn't there a caffeinated water? Yeah, it's called Water yes. Joe. It's Ugh. no good. It's not. It's good. okay. It's very bitter. It's very good. bitter. You can definitely so taste you... the uh, the after the caffeine whatever they add to it. Yeah, that's the, the bitterness. aftertaste. <laughs> the Did crushed... you also purchase this Mountain Dew Super Melon? Wartime Major, bang bang? Major oh, you melon. better believe I did. Greg, I suspect you purchased this as well because you know that the packaging features a watermelon with an army helmet on it. Okay, well, one, I had to look it up on the internet because I didn't believe you were actually talking about a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> two, I've never seen this. I haven't. It just came out like, like uh, two weeks ago. Well, look at me, early and, adopter. Spoiler, Major I, Melon is a new Pokemon in the next game. <laughs> <laughs> and then I looked at the packaging and literally said, nothing about this is selling me on this product. You don't nothing. ride skateboards, okay? This appeals to the skateboard. Oh, is this your radical uh, skateboarding nature, the rebel, yes. the, you know, wild art the wild of, man of watermelons with 
sharp teeth and tongue sticking out. <laughs> Who came up with this? <laughs> Steve, what is your review of Mountain Dew Major Melon? Uh, it's pretty mediocre. Uh, I thought, it, I mean, I finished the 12 pack. It's, it's pretty disgusting. It's, it I, really is. it's better. Oh, here's what, here's my review. It's better than regular Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a low bar. To, Cause I, yeah. I think regular Mountain Dew is pretty, pretty not great. It's just, I, it's just bland citrus. Like, well, what's is... not great about Mountain Dew? It's just literally slightly citrus and mostly caffeine. This is bland watermelon. I mean, yeah. I'm not into that because I just bought my whole thing of uh, watermelon bubbly, which was on sale, which we know I love. I am into anything that has new on it, though. Like, if I walk down the candy aisle <laughs> and there, it, it says new on the packaging, I'm in. You got me. So, new like, Pokemon Snap? <laughs> Why are you so such a fool why are you a marketer's absolute dream customer i Look, don't I like get it you have been things. alive for a, many many years and you are like i in a world that there's no world of seven like you pretend you are the <laughs> most sophisticated buyer and yet somebody's has slaps new on something and like i'm in and if they said new and rare you would buy 50 of them. no i this just like 100 trying- a lie because if there was a package that said new lettuce no he'd still walk on by that yeah he, that's he, true. he's not I, touching no wet paper this is why i have an appreciation <laughs> for burger king because they always have new things on their menu, and I'm the guy that's like, yeah, I want to try that. Burger <sighs> taco? Sign me up. <laughs> Except you don't want to try, like, you want new things in your safe zone. Yeah, yes, Because your 100%. zone is so Correct. small, Correct. you See? don't explore out that you're like, well, <laughs> it's new, but also slightly in my safe zone. I guess this is my major New Year's resolution. <laughs> I'm going to try... A slightly different flavor of Mountain Dew and call it exploring. <laughs> yeah. A million percent <laughs> correct. It's like, oh, new Sour Patch Kids? I like Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> I am definitely willing to try a slightly new version of this candy that I am confident I like. What can they even do to make Sour Patch Kids new? Oh, new flavors! You I know. don't know, but I will hustle for a sour Pass, patch kid uh, sponsorship on this show. I mean, it's possible. Like, what do we need to do? <laughs> <laughs> Probably let them know we're interested. <laughs> I mean, how many more flavors can they come up with for sour patch kids? I don't, I, they could go even like, more sour. Yeah, but I mean, more sour isn't new. It just improved. <laughs> Which is also a phrase that that makes me question humanity. New and improved. Which is it? <laughs> it can't be new if you've improved on something. Because that thing existed before and you're improving on it. Speaking of new. <laughs> we have uh, information and a release date for a new Pokemon Snap. Which I will die on this hill that that's a bad name. It is a terrible name. Uh, but we will get to that in the later half of the show. Uh, we need what? to get through our uh, financials first. Uh, oh, here we go. Are we in the red or are we in the black? I still don't know which one is good. The red is good, right? Incorrect. Incorrect. <laughs> this is why you don't do my taxes. Okay. Let's start off with some Pokemon Go news. We have three <laughs> different Pokemon Go things that all apply to money, but in very different ways. One is a lawsuit that the Pokemon that Niantic wins. One is somebody being fined for playing Pokemon Go. <laughs> <laughs> and the last is how much money Pokemon Go has made in 2020. There's a lot here. If you don't play Pokemon Go... I feel like the three articles here are still very worth listening to. I think let's start with uh, let's start with uh, arrest, not an arrest. It's a fine. This is off it's BBC fine. News. This is from our Attic channel. Uh, who who's uh, who in Europe sent me this? <laughs> uh, Stuart, of course it was Stuart. Okay, Stuart sent this in. Stuart, uh, of course it was Stuart. COVID nineteen. Oh, B- off BBC. COVID-19, Bedworth Pokemon... Pl- where, where's Bedworth? 
I've never even heard of that. It must be in the UK somewhere. Bedworth Pokemon player fined for lockdown breach. A man was fined for breaking lockdown rules after traveling 14 miles to play Pokemon Go. He admitted to Warwickshire... Po- the, the UK isn't a real place. Who? What is Warwickshire? War- it is a place where they make whisker, wicker baskets and... War in <laughs> hills. Warwickshire. This is like a place from The Hobbit. Well, yeah. Uh, as is the majority of the UK, <laughs> correct. Yeah, like, <laughs> that's what they do. Bedworth is north of Coventry, south of Newington. Man admitted to War- Warwickshire police that he is driven from his home in Bedworth to look for characters, I think, uh, Pokemon, in Kenilworth. He was fined 200 L with a line through it. Pounds. pounds. Okay. I wasn't sure if, if that was pounds or euros. Uh, for, quote. Why would a euro be an L? <laughs> a euro is an e. EU. <laughs> it's a weird country over there. <laughs> I mean, it's multiple weird countries, but we aren't. We aren't going to get into that. Uh, he was fined 200 pounds. What is that in U.S. dollars? It's uh, probably 200, like 250. Okay. $271. Okay. Yeah. There you go. He was fine for uh, you. Greg knew instantly I was going to ask what the conversion was. He was ready for what it. What do you think I'm on this <laughs> show for? He was, he was fine. We can't get to this article because Europe is too weird. <laughs> <laughs> he was fine. Yes. Okay. Next article. <laughs> 200 the truest <laughs> thing ever said we <laughs> can't get through this because europe is too weird exactly For i course. mean have you seen eurovision oh no worse than that somebody like brought up crazy frog to me and i had to watch the crazy frog videos only europe could have produced <laughs> crazy frog okay uh he was fined 270 pounds for quote Contraving the requirement to not leave or be outside the place they live without a reasonable excuse, end quote. Uh, This is the police spokeswoman said, everyone has a part in play. Everyone has a part to play in ensuring they slow the spread of the virus. We would like to remind people not they must not leave or be outside their home unless they have a reasonable excuse. That was a uh, that was a uh, three sentence article that took us about twenty minutes to get through. <laughs> Can you spell contraving to me because that's not a word in English. Uh, contraving, c o n t r a v e n i n g. Contravening. Contravening. You left out a whole <laughs> syllable there. <laughs> it's okay. I, I I don't know what that word means either. <laughs> Uh, like it means like the going against going, yeah, against. going against the rules. BBC could have just said that. They did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was hard because it it, it was fifty fifty that it was contravening or contriving. Yeah, and I was like, I, I, was I, I, I had to too. get clarification. Uh, okay, I actually had to look up the article. <laughs> it's uh, uh, we made it through that one. We did? Yeah. I mean, there's it more is, to the article. I, did. I got a whole bunch going on. It's a, I think we're good with the article now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's nothing interesting in there, except like they they actually quote a quote-unquote commenter on Reddit saying, it's still exercise? Is exercise okay. allowed in the UK lockdown right now? Because no, I I not. understood they were like, they were like, don't leave your house unless you're going to get some food or necessary supplies. Otherwise, don't even walk out your front door, buddy. This is off Polygon.com. Pokemon Go creator, aka Niantic. But you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta get that SEO in your in your article title. <laughs> Pokemon Go creator wins a five million dollar settlement from hack creators. A cheat maker creating hacks for Pokemon Go, Ingress, and Harry Potter Wizards Unite has agreed to a $5 million settlement following a lawsuit filed by creator Niantic in 2019. The final judgment on this on the case, which also granted Niantic a permanent injunction, was filed in California. Of course, it was California. District Court on Tuesday. First reported by Torrent Freak, the hacking group called Global Plus Plus created infringing programs Go++, Potter++, Ingress++, each 
uh, of which were hacked versions of the relatively games using Ni- Niantic's game code. Using Niantic's code, Global Plus Plus's apps were tweaked versions of Niantic's games, allowing players uh, the ability to spoof their GPS and use auto walk functions, among other features. As part of the lawsuit, Global Plus Plus faced charges including copyright infringement and violation of computer fraud and the Abuse Act. The cheaters were founded to have accessed and copied Niantic's map data and have uh, fi- been financially benefiting from its actions, selling access to its programs, which allowed players to cheat the system. As part of the settlement, Go- Global Plus Plus has agreed to pay $5 million in damages. It will also stop making these hacks, selling using Niantic's code, and won't interfere with Niantic's mobile games or servers again. Niantic has been involved in a couple lawsuits over the past few years, including a 2019 settlement involving Pokemon Go and angry homeowners, good old Lake Park, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. (laughs) It all comes back. Milwaukee lost that lawsuit, by the way. Uh, Of course they did. The year prior, Niantic settled a class action lawsuit and agreed to pay attendees of the Chicago Pokemon Go Festival their share of a $1.5 million settlement. You know, I'm curious. They said they they agree to the settlement for $5 million. They're going to stop selling and making these apps. But I would assume that Global Plus Plus probably is okay. $5 million is probably a huge hit, but they probably... They probably made their money over the years. Well, how many years have they been in business? Mm, I think they s- started with Ingress. Oh, wow, well, yeah. And people are just so comfortable cheating at Pokemon Go mm-hmm. that no surprise. Okay, last article here, at least regarding Pokemon Go and money. <laughs> <laughs> and money. This is off uh, GoNintendo.com. A Pokemon Go pulls in one 0.92 billion in revenue for 2020. Last time we heard about Pokemon Go's revenue was on December 15th of last year. At the time we heard the game pulled in roughly 1.2 billion. Now final numbers have been crunched and the final total for 2020 is considerably higher. According to Super Data, Niantic and Pokemon Company had a fantastic year. Pokemon Go pulled in 1.9 1.92 billion dollars in revenue when the year closed out. It is unclear if the earlier reporting was a bit off, but the game saw a huge boost the last couple weeks of 2020. Either way, all parties involved must be happy uh, with how impressive the game continues to be. That's a lot of money. This has immediately made me open up my Robin Hood so I can see how much is Niantic trading for today. Why can't I find Niantic? Does Niantic not trade on the stock exchange? I don't think so. Are they keeping that one point? whatever billion to themselves and not oh, share it with I me I would, investor? They, I would assume they would be sharing with uh, good old Pokemon company first and foremost <sighs> hmm this is sus it says buy or sell Niantic stock pre-IPO via an equity zen fund that doesn't make sense uh, so the last thing I find was back in 2019 uh they have no plans to go for a public stock at that point. So they're just... Yeah, they're just sitting up. <sighs> because just, I, I had a few shares in Nintendo, and that stuff just dropped <laughs> 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 faster than my smile if you handed me a plate of lima beans. I tell you, it was no good. <laughs> FYI, I don't like lima beans. Please don't ever offer me lima beans. Oh, well, I'm going to put away my lima bean casserole I was bringing you today. Thank you. Please. That... If you if you want to end our friendship <laughs> with no discussion, debate, just a very brief transaction, just hand me some. Li- li- there is no such food as lima bean casserole. You make it up, give it to me, and it's over. That's that. That is the symbol of friendship's end, right there. I'm looking at three different lima bean casseroles right now. Oh, <laughs> only the Midwest could come up with such an atrocity. Uh incorrect. This is from the South. Yeah, the South is like the Midwest. Of the South. <laughs> yes. All right, last bit of Pokemon Go news is actual Pokemon Go news. Uh, yeah. Did, okay, we- so before we get to Hoenn Week, mm-hmm. which I'm sure Greg's very excited about. I'm very excited about it. I won't do the medal, but I'm excited about oh, it. Oh, my goodness. Did you guys finish your Sinnoh no. medal? Heck Not even no. close. Uh, no. Not even close. 
What do you mean not even close? It's like catch four Pokemon. <laughs> it is not catch four Pokemon. Two of them were shadow. Yeah? And I didn't get those balloons. That's fair. At all. I had one. I, I, I got, got one of the balloons. Jesse and James. I'm like, that doesn't help. Will, no metal for you? Oh, of course not. I will say that I was surprised that my Chimchar catch was shiny. Oh, nice. Congrats. But let's see what I have left. Hold on. I got to pull up my, my Pokemon Go. You, so, you still while, have Greg, today. while you're doing that, let me re-explain the only way that I play Pokemon Go. If I have not like physically in presence with one of you two folks mm-hmm. is exchanging pleasant gifts with my many, many Pokemon Go playing friends and putting on cute little stickers, mostly the Torchic one because I'm extra lazy and that's the first one in the list. But I, I, I do have a new issue. They have added a sticker mm-hmm. that looks as best as I can translate. It looks like a very depressed, fluffy, white cloud lying on its side. <laughs> you know, the Alolan Vulpix is the greatest sticker. That Vulpix has sharp features, alertness. This is no Vulpix. This it's is fluffy. No, no, that's yes. inappropriate. I don't think I know what sticker you're talking about. Thank you for making me look at that. It looks like a sad cat cloud. It's Who so designed cute. this thing? Are you talking about the chubby Alolan Vulpix? Okay, a Vulpix is never chubby. <laughs> Vulpix is like this I awesome. think Aquiline is the word. No, it's it is awful. so cute. It's it is really so cute. cute. Dumb. Would, it's I not would, Pokemon. It's like Sanrio. It's like Gudetama. Why? <sighs> I, I do like Drunk Pikachu as well. Which one's Drunk Pikachu? It's the one next to the buy sticker. The, the the yeah, which you still have buy. Oh, yeah, my yeah. my buy is gone. I have no, buy. I still have buy. Weird. Oh, the, I will say I am a big fan of the Pikachu and Eevee drinking out of the yes, Ditto coffee cup. I do like that. What makes me think of style as the Vulpix. But the the Vulpix is uh, uh, look. It's just wrong. Okay, <laughs> it's just it, it is certifiably can we if, change our i uh, our our messages icon to the vulpix if you do i will leave <laughs> and you will never hear from me ever again so lima bean casserole and uh fluffy cute vulpix sticker these so, are the lines fluffy cute <laughs> vulpix sticker floating in the lime bean casserole yeah that's oh, what we no. need somebody somebody art that up for will I mean, this is like looking at the the stickers that that Greg sent. It's like we've got some some winners here. We've got a, oh, a magic card. Good ones. Jump the magic card. Jump, fantastic. The little thank you Torchic, which is the one that I use the most. Great, mm-hmm. beautiful, well done. The the Eevee and Pikachu drinking out of the Ditto coffee cup. That makes me think of Chris every single time I see it. But that Vulpix is just bad. It just, it's just bad. It's like, so and good. It's, it's, it's so almost cute. like It's almost like one of those like visual, uh, I don't remember what you call it, but it's like if you tilt your phone sideways one way, it looks like it could be like a, it looks like it could be Totoro with like swirly eyes. And then if you look at it the other way, if you tilt your phone the other way, to, then it looks just like uh, a cat with some whipped cream. On its head? Maybe? But this is no Vulpix. No. No. Trainers. Even my cat disagrees. We are excited to announce the Hoenn. Uh, that Hoenn will be the next region in our celebration. In the tu- countdown? From Tuesday, January 19th through Sunday, January 24th. Trico, Torchic, Mudkip, Talo, Loudrid, Nosepass, Aeron, Meditite, Roselia, Carvana, Numel. Ball toy and more will be appearing in the wild. If you're lucky, you may encounter a shiny Aeron, which has been shiny for two years. Hmm? I mean, you still have to be lucky to encounter it. It's true. Yeah. Very true. The following Pokemon will be hatching from 5k eggs. Skitty. It's also pronounced Numel, not Numel. Thank you. I think you're right. Skitty, Aeron, Corfish, <laughs> Lyleep, <laughs> Anorith, Bagon, Beldum. <laughs> I can't 
believe Greg has the 3DS voice perfected. Perfected. Enjoy event exclusive research that leads to Stardust and leads to encounters like uh, of wild Pokemon such as Trico, Torchic, Mudkip, Aeron, Plusle, Minin, and Welmer. The following Pokemon will be in raids. Trico, Torchic, Mudkip, Ralts, Aeron, and Bagon appearing in one star raids. And then Breloom, Mawile, Grumpig, Spinda, which is actually exciting, and Absol yeah. in three star raids. Uh, I guess we don't know. Maybe data miners know. I didn't look at the data mine for this. I don't know. If, we don't know if this is like an ex- exclusive Spinda, if there's all the Spinda designs. I think there's, what, eight of them? Uh, it doesn't Maybe say it's here. the Valentine's Day one coming back. Could, yeah, it could be the, the Valentine's Day one. Mm. Gives you a reason to do three stars, though. I don't think... I'd be curious to ever look at the back end of Niantic of, like, how many people did a Groudon or how many people did, uh like, Genesect, and then, like, how many people did the three-star Grumpig raid? <laughs> <laughs> like 50. The same amount who picked 444. Uh, Kyogre and Groudon will be returning in five-star raids. Uh, complete the Hoenn-themed collection challenge during the events by collecting Trico, Torchic, Mudkip, Ninkada, or is it Ninkada? Ninkada! Nosepass, Aeron, Plusle, Minin, and Bagon to receive three silver pinaps, XP, and an incense. Evolve Matang, the evolution of Beldum, during the event to get a Metagross that knows the previous community day move Meteor Bash. Uh, event exclusive time research will be available. Uh, catch two Kyogres to earn 10 Kyogre candy. Catch two Groudons to earn 10 Groudon candy. Catch 30 Pokemon to earn 30 Pokeballs. Uh, complete all the research tasks to encounter a Rayquaza that knows the exclusive charge attack hurricane as well as 3000 XP and a silver pinup. If you're lucky, you may encounter a shiny Rayquaza. A free bundle featuring three remote raid passes will help you catch Kyogre and Groudon, and it will be available in the game shop between Tuesday to Monday. And then Johto will be the following week. Uh, nothing Yay. too exciting there, I guess. I mean, right. I'm, I'm into it because it's Hoenn, but I will probably spend as much time doing this as it did the others, which is not. But they did announce the greatest community day ever. Very excited. Yeah, well, I'm I'm glad you're excited. The everybody should be excited. It is the best community day, and anybody who says differently has heard from me on Twitter because I actively sought out people on Twitter who are complaining about it and posting. I think this is wonderful. It's a great Pokemon as a jerk test to see how they responded. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would argue that it's a wonderful community day because I will have so much fun enjoying it with you, Greg. Yeah! Because I know you'll be happy and I will just be able to share in that moment with I you. May even, I may even do a test run of downtown Minneapolis on this particular day and actually go out because I want to catch as many Rosalia as I possibly can. I might even buy extra storage. I, st- I I saw somebody tweet that like this is the eighth community day in a row or something that's like a repeat like of Pokemon that are not new shinies I think or something of the sort because like Machop's already been shiny. Oh, I can't believe Niantic is shorting us by not giving us a new shiny with this community day. How dare they? I am <laughs> done with this game. Um, but I guess my argument would be like one, not everyone played. Two to three years ago. Mm-hmm. Two, why would you why would you not save the good community days until after the pandemic is over? This is a good community day. <laughs> well, sure. This is, a- the, this is argu- <laughs> arguably the best community day they have done since the start of Pokemon Go. I don't know. Even better than the one where they revealed Meltan accidentally? It wasn't an accident. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that thing's ugly, Look, so I'm just- sure. Playing into the whole. Oh, okay, got it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's fine. I mean, there, there, there's going to be it's a great. point where these events are going to repeat themselves, uh, and they're just repeating themselves during a time where it's hard to get outside. So we're at the point where they're repeating themselves. We were at the point two years ago when they repeated them before. <laughs> like they, they do catch up days all the time. They do catch up months all of December. I'm not a big ketchup fan. I prefer mustard or barbecue sauce. Oh, I hate sauce. ketchup. So. On ketchup day, I just stay home. 
I mean, but two exclusive moves, Bullet Seed and Weather Ball Fire. Look at the great things, plus the best shiny in the game. It's How a, it is, it is a, really a real move. Uh, so Weather Ball ch- changes according to the weather that's on the field in the regular games. So apparently they are giving it a set type in Go. So they're saying Weather Ball will always do fire and not ah. change according to the weather which is kind of weird since they introduced seasons and they had weather forever but whatever look they're and trying you know desperately taking... to have all the balances po- as possible for uh their gbl <laughs> i am going to be taking many snapshots for my surprises during this game i don't know what the surprises are i'm sure it's just more rosalia in your picture but i'm into that I'm I'm sure it is. This is the great I've never been more excited. I was going to I was out I had burned out in December trying to get to 40. I was done with this game and they brought me back in. They, they know finally, how to pull your I trigger. Mean, they know they yep. finally did the it's right thing. Very clear Niantic listening to the show. We complained about three star raids. They were like Spinda's here to save Spinda's the day. Here. They they went on Greg's journey of forty, and mm-hmm. they were like, "We need to, we need to win we Greg to back. Pull, we need to pull him back in somehow. Get him. Make it possible that he have twenty shiny Rosalia at the end of the day. Because I will. I unlike most days, like I did, I did the Machop one for two hours, and I got ten. I will. I will be out hoofing it, trying to get that two hundred catch for the thing you're, I'm supposed to you're do. You're playing all, all 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 six hours. Yeah, man, I'm getting everything. I say that I won't last six hours. <laughs> <laughs> I will not. Well, I, won't last. I have eleven cans of Mountain Dew Zero Sugar <laughs> Major Melon, Greg. Right. I know well, how I, you respond to caffeine, so you're just gonna keep downing them. I need to bring you your th- thing, your 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 Christmas item. Shh. Yes, I understand. So yes. I'll sw- I'll swaps. I will I will take. Some of Major Melon off your hands. You'll be awake for days. Mm. <laughs> Steve could attest to my lack of drinking caffeine and sleeping. He witnessed that miracle. In, I in have had Seattle. three hours of sleep over the past two days. And look at how awake I am right now <laughs> off one can of Mountain Dew. It's Why is it not diet Mountain Dew? It, they, oh, the words. Mountain Dew Zero Sugar Major Melon. Mountain Dew Zero Sugar Major Melon. Okay, I'm into okay. it. They're not sponsoring the show. We can't stop giving them air <laughs> airtime. Maybe they're not sponsoring you yet. Oh yeah, true. But we do need to do our disclosure at some point. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about Pokemon 25th anniversary and Pokemon Snap, and the Dang. fact that I still cannot figure out what dress Katy Perry is actually wearing. It. I cannot understand this picture. Hey, short and sweet this week. If you are enjoying, it's super effective and you want to go an extra level to support, you can head over to patreon.com slash p-k-m-n-c-a-s-t or you can just head over to isc.cash and for $2 a month, you can support our podcast that we do every single week. And you can now, because Patreon lets you, sign up for an entire year and that only comes to like $20 and that puts money in our pocket and puts Pokemon on the table for us to eat. That doesn't that that doesn't work. Anyways, uh, you can head over to patreon.com slash PKMNCAST if you would like to support the show. And that's it. I hope you enjoy the rest of this podcast. Thank you for listening. Hey 
and we are back from our break. It was, uh, it currently is, I suppose, as of recording, but when this podcast comes out, it was Players Cup 3 this weekend. Bow, bow, bow. Greg and Will, how'd you do? I did great. Uh, I went zero and zero. Oh, my- 100%. Held my record strong. I didn't give anything away. It was great. I thought this meant that I was just supposed to have coffee out of my play on play a <laughs> coffee cup. That was my play as cup. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. Well. How did you do, Steve? I watched some of it. Not as good as I wanted. I don't think I qualified, unfortunately. I ended at um sixteen eleven. Uh, wait, score. wait! You don't think you qualified, or you know you didn't qualify? I know I didn't two qualify. Okay, the the qualify people came to you and said no, not this no. Time, they buddy. did. They did not come to me and say you did not qualify. But I ranked. I did my forty five matches. You can't do more. Only allowed forty five. Had a ranking of sixteen eleven. Um, you start at fifteen hundred, uh, and then in order to qualify, you probably need to be closer to sixteen fifty, which I believe I was sixteen forty eight last time for Players Cup two, uh, and I was a thousandth in the world. I think a thousand one thousand and eleventh place when I ended, which means I mean there's still people participating now, so that number could go up or could go down. But since they're taking the top eight hundred players ish. 256 from North America, 256 from South America, 128 Oceania, and then 256 Europe. Pretty sure I'm out of that barrier. Unless for what? some reason 500 Japanese players qualify <laughs> or like top cut it or placed high because Japan can play, but they can't qualify. I was just going to say, what if there was a whole bunch of disqualifications because of cheating? Mm-hmm. I don't think anyone cheated. Oh, really? Not that I know of. I I I won twenty seven matches. I lost eighteen. Uh, I did the math. If I would have, if I would have not lost, what's the right words? If I would have won twenty nine and lost sixteen, so two losses mattered because normally you get like you either lose anywhere between like ten to twenty points per win or loss. So if I if I if I got the lowest amount of points per win and those weren't losses, I would have saved 20 points and gained 20 points, which would have put me at 1650. I thought my first day on stream was uh, went really well and then I played mm-hmm. Saturday night and I should have probably taken more breaks in between matches. Well, I know it's hard when you're so excited. Yeah, it's it, it's like a nerve thing too. And I, I had the same nerve thing at like, uh, you know, when we played in-game tournaments, Will, where you're just like, ah, I just want the match to start instead of just like sitting there waiting. I mean, I enjoyed sitting there waiting, quietly meditating <laughs> on the pleasure that it is to mm-hmm. be alive. Uh, I had a good time. I think I performed pretty okay. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I guess I can't say I'm sure they'll do a Players' Cup 4. I don't see why they wouldn't. Seems to be. Oh, I mean. Seems to they be, probably will. Yeah, it seems to be doing really well for them. You were a whole bucket of emotions watching when I was watching. Good emotions or bad emotions? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, if I know <laughs> anything from history, you just get too tied up in the whole thing. When you when you were winning, it, you were you were at the highest highs, and then I could always tell your silent rage when things are going bad. Is you get that you get that death look in your eyes, that dead <laughs> seriousness of turn this around. I I'm not a player that likes to do hard reads, where it's like, you know, they have a Rilla boom in front of me, and and I have a Blastoise out, so like there's no reason for them to switch because they have like the obvious advantage there. So my best move is to like hailstorm into the into the Rilla boom, but I I could be like well. I think they're going to switch to Incineroar, which would not take damage from the Hailstorm, but also you don't bring an Incineroar out in front of a di- Gigantamax Blastoise. And I think well, that's... maybe you don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're not playing seven chess. Like, R- R- Rillaboom still survives the, the Hailstorm. There were a lot of... Uh, last night, 
Saturday night. There were a lot, like every opponent I played just felt like they were just doing hard reads left and right, and it it did get the it did get them the wins. Uh, I I play more safe, but in a best of one, sometimes you just need one or two hard reads to yeah get the momentum because you don't have a way to. It's not like I'm going to rematch them, right? It's not like a best out of three where like it's like okay now I know that this Pokemon has right a life orb where I didn't know that before. So, but overall, you enjoyed your experience, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I wish I had more time with the team. Uh, I played, um, I played like a Salamence Porygon team on stream for like the last two months, and. That was like making changes to the Pokemon. It was pretty much the same team for two months. Uh, and then last minute, I decided to change the team. So I only had, Gwil knows this, where we, we would change decks the night before a tournament. <laughs> That's the biggest mistake you can make, buddy. No, I, I, I think changing the team was the correct decision. I, I liked the team more. I had fun playing the team. But I switched to a Blastoise Dragapult team like two days before, and I... Only had two days to practice, but I think I did pretty okay with it. Just bummed that I that I didn't qualify, but that's okay. There'll be next time. One less thing to put on my LinkedIn profile. <laughs> and I've been checking. <laughs> I'll have you know. All right, let's start with the 25th anniversary stuff. Uh, their 25 the 25th anniversary for Pokemon takes place in February, but they are kicking it off early here. So this is their press release that came out just a couple days ago. Pokemon celebrates 25 years with a massive music program and activations across the franchise. Katy Perry headlines P25 Music, a year of surprise music events and superstar collaborations. With the Pokemon Company, International officially launches the celebrations for the landmark 25th anniversary. As an iconic video game and entertainment franchise beloved by million, millions of fans all ages around the world, Pokemon is bringing people together ever since 1996. In 2021, Pokemon continues that tradition by aligning with other universal unifying forces, music. Headlined pop by pop icon Katy Perry, the star-studded program created in partnership with Universal Music Group, the world leader... In music entertainment, it should be the world leader in scamming artists out of their money, but okay. <laughs> Dang. A company's fan-focused activations by celebrating 25 years of Pokemon across the franchise's portfolio of video games, mobile apps, animation, merchandise, and more. To help, fa- to help fans kick off the celebration, a live-action video uniquely highlighting moments of the brand's 25th history and a journey through the Pokemon's world's many regions can be viewed at the beginning beginning today on the channel. Uh, Pokemon is working with some of the biggest names in music, from rising stars to award-winning global superstars for its program titled P25 Music. Pop icon Katy Perry was re- revealed today as the premier collaborator in the massive year-long music campaign. So is this like instead of us getting like a year of mythical or like a year of legendary, we're just gonna get like one new song a month? No, yep. I don't think that this is an instead. This is just one of the many features that oh, they I will see. be providing us. It's a it's a puzzle, so you have to decode the code in every song that so you can actually put that into your switch, and yes. then it will unlock something. But if you don't listen and buy the song, and then figure out the code. You won't get it. No one buys songs anymore. Excuse? What? They just have their Apple Music or Spotify or... If What's that other one? Title. I believe there's one Nick Burgess out there that has received cash from me at least twice in the Correct. past five years. I, I buy from artists because streaming services don't really pay them, and if I really like it, I will pay them the money they deserve for the product that they made. So I will buy it. Even though I may listen to it on Spotify, I will buy their music from them the most direct way that I can. Because if I'm really enjoying it, they should get paid, and they should get paid fairly. This is the basis of a lawsuit happening right now against you. Don't music artists get, like, a dollar from, like, a $10? Like, they don't... This is the whole point of UMG, like... 
what is UMG? Universal Music Group. Oh, whatever. You're, I, I don't know what you're talking about with that thing. The whole issue, what it boils down to, dollars to donuts, streaming, they get like a tenth of a penny per stream versus if you buy the music, then they get like at they, least they, 10% they, of the cost. Yeah, they get like 10 pennies instead of one penny. Two, 10 that's pennies ten is still better more. than one penny. Exactly. <laughs> that's how that's math works. 10 times more. And I'm giving them that on top of the money from streaming. The only the only people who wins here are UMG. Universal Music Group. Yes. Okay. Katy Perry has a quote here. <laughs> Pokemon has been a constant in my life from playing the original video games on my Game Boy to trading Pokemon TCG cards at lunch to the adventures of catching Pokemon on the streets in Pokemon Go. I've even visited the Pokemon Cafe in Japan while on tour. It was an honor to be chosen to help celebrate a franchise that has given me much joy in the last 25 years and to be able to watch it all evolve in the ways it has provided a kind of electric joy for kids in my life and around the world, said Katy Perry. So one thing I'm happy to kind of get a clarification on is I was concerned that like Katy Perry was the only musical component of this whole yeah. thing and uh, to find out that there will be other artists featured i mean i like i do enjoy the occasional Katy perry although you know problematic in certain areas mm-hmm. um but yeah just to know that other artists will also be featured that I, that makes me happy i'm not in the music scene like you Ever. two are yeah you don't like music but yeah i i i hate everything that brings joy um, i mean yep. he he bought that lord album Seven years ago or eight what? years ago. Yeah. You did? Yeah, I, I saw I, it on I, his record player I, that one yeah, time. I, I do have a record player. I do have <laughs> I do have records of music, one being... Are you a vinyl hipster? Uh, at one Vine. point in my life... Look, I wore He's a, a chain wallet <laughs> at one point in my life. Of this course I have true. a record player. I shopped at uh, Urban Outfitters. You know, every once in a while, I forget how basic you are, and then <laughs> know, you come rushing the back in through the door. The conversation earlier not describe, <laughs> like, paint that picture clearly. I mean, I try to think that I've made better choices with my friends in my life, and you're here to prove me wrong. I literally had the rem- the memory that this morning. I was, like, walking. I had just gone to Target, and I was walking to the elevator from my car, and literally the thought came through my head of, I remember when Steve used to only wear Supras. It's like, that was the only <laughs> shoes that he would buy was Supras. As, okay, as so... An- as, as a, a music person, yes. As as an owner of uh, Katy Perry Teenage Dream on vinyl. Okay, this is this is actually my point. If they're saying Katy Perry is headlining, that means mm-hmm. no artist bigger than Katy Perry can be on whatever they're doing this year. Uh, um, that's open to interpretation. They yeah. may be saying headlining just because she's the first featured artist, okay. while other ones will be coming later, but like she's the headliner because she's first. Not because she's greatest and most powerful. Okay. Although yeah, she's the greatest I mean, and so most powerful. Katie headlining Perry. generally means they are the main act, but that that doesn't mean like <laughs> that somebody that you would consider more famous than her won't also be included. It's just that she's the main focus of of what they're doing. Uh, and she may have had a big role in selecting the artists that were a part of this collaboration but if it's if it's umg universal music group if remember we are talking international not universal no but it says there it says pokemon is working with umg specifically so does that mean the other artists have to be also signed to umg like Katy perry is probably most likely yes yeah so we're not going to see any bts no unless they do something like, you can sign agreements to out, but probably not because they don't want to pay that money. But, you know, there could be a Taylor Swift, a Lady Gaga on there. I'm assuming those are UMG. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a Mariah Carey could be on there. Ooh. Do you think they All bring I want back... for Christmas is Pokemon. Do you think they bring back M2M? Was M2M on M- uh, UMG? I've never even heard of this group. What? M2M did the Mewtwo movie song. Well, weren't they Norwegian? Were uh, they? Yeah, I think they were from somewhere in Europe. 
Oh, uh, they were EMI and uh, what was the other one? EMI and Atlantic. So I don't think so. No. Colin Palmer, vice president of marketing at Pokemon Company International, says in Katy Perry, we see a kindred spirit to Pokemon whose world is bright, fun and unli- uh, uplifting. Katy Perry is a wonderful ambassador to help us celebrate 25 years of Pokemon and we can't wait for music fans everywhere to experience the collaborations we have planned. And then LJ Gurez, general manager of UMG. Ooh. According to just as a breaking breaking news, I'm looking on Wikipedia and I do not know how accurate this is, but list of Universal Music Group artists under B is BTS South Korea. Oh. Well, well, well. Interesting. I know BTS has signed a big hit, I believe, is their label brand. Also, Butthole Surfers is part of that. So I'm looking oh, for their song. They haven't been good since 1993. This could be their comeback. Frankie Goes to Hollywood is on this list. I'm waiting for that comeback. This could be the greatest Pokemon album ever. But also, remember, like, Universal is a, is like... The, the high level. I'm 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 gesturing with my hand, which you cannot see. <laughs> Universal's at the top. They have many subdivision labels under them. So the label that BTS is on could be a subdivision of true, Universal true, Music true, true. Group. That's the group part. We're honored to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Pokemon and a significant cultural impact this beloved franchise continues to have around the world. Working together, we have de- developed dynamic year-round programming to involve artists across UMG's labels. Because what a better way to create a global celebration than through the power of music. Details yes. about Katy Perry's participation, additional artist surprise, and more about the P25 music will be announced throughout the year. All right, that's it. We're done with the music part. I still don't get this dress. 25 years of adventure, a journey throughout the Pokemon world. Since the first video games launched in 1996, the franchise has explored a new region in the Pokemon world with each introduction of the core series games. In 2021, the Pokemon Company International will invite fans to relive their journeys through each of these regions in a year-long program, beginning with the most recently discovered region, the Galar region from Pokemon Sword and Shield, and ending with the classic Kanto region from Red and Blue games. Beginning today, fans can visit a new website to serve as a hub for all fan celebration and activities that are announced throughout the year, uh, located at Pokemon.com slash 25, just 25, not the spelled out one. Anniversary partners, celebration programs, and merchandise. Pokemon adventures are always better with friends, so the Pokemon Company International is teaming up with iconic brands to help fans celebrate the journey throughout the year with unique promotions and merchandise. Collaborations in the brand's 25th anniversary includes programs from Build-A-Bear Workshop, General yeah. General Mills, Levi's. Hey, that's local. Yeah. I, like, I wear their clothes. What, General Mills or Levi's? Yeah, General Mills clothes. Isn't General Gen- Mills a cereal? Yeah. Have you never wore uh, raw Frosted Flake pants? It's the new thing. Levi's, McDonald's, and more. Fans can also look forward to more merchandise uh, from licensees, including Jazzwares, Solastic, Mattel, Funko, Power A, and the Wan Company. We do know that the Wan Company is making those hundred dollar fancy Pokeball things. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, mm. did you mean Scholastic? Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I was I just I was, uh, I was pondering that for a long time. I'm like stuttered a bit. You know. Uh Jazzwares is what used to be wicked cool toys. Oh. Uh we, Jazzwares bought them out and merged with them. Mat- Tell has made Pokemon stuff before. Scholastic has made Pokemon stuff before. Funko, obviously. Power A makes those Pikachu Switch controllers and stuff. Additional partners and the ways will be celebrated throughout the year. The Pokemon trading card game is a cornerstone of the brand and fans can look forward to a special 25th anniversary theme collection for the TCG later in 2021. In the meantime, hey, maybe in the meantime, you should actually stock cards 
In the meantime, fans will soon be able to collect oversized Jeez. cards featuring Pikachu and the beloved first partner Pokemon in various regions featured in the franchise spanning retrospective. Fans can also expect 25th anniversary themed products from the Pokemon Center, the premier destination for official high quality Pokemon merchandise to the U.S. and Canada. To kick off the celebrations on Pokemon Centers, fans will be able to pre-order the 25th limited edition skateboard by industry craftsman Bear Walker starting on January 19th. That's the day after this program comes out. Mm-hmm. Are, are also, we, are we commentary the on high quality? No, we're not getting that skateboard. Uh, the high quality Pokemon Center merchandise. I bought the two athletic Pikachu tank tops that are available from Pokemon Center. I have worn them both to the gym. Nobody commented on either one, but they were very comfortable. Ooh, I'm going to buy that. The dark gray think, one is much more comfortable. You think Togepi Lover would like them? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. More if there was Togepi on them, but... How long do you think it's been? How long have we heard since we've heard from Togepi Lover? Mm, too long. Too, too long. long. I'm concerned for their health. Uh, more celebrations along the way. The details are just a glimpse of what the world can expect in 2021 with the 25th anniversary uh, activations plan for animation... Video games, mobile games, including Go and Masters EX, uh, and more big announcements from the franchise. Fans will have a year full of new journeys ahead. Maybe we'll talk about this next week, but there is... Somebody broke their NDA for Pokemon Unite. There are... There's squ- oh, yeah, there yeah, is yeah. Cinderace in a, in a pirate costume. There's Machamp wearing suspenders. There's... Mm, <laughs> <laughs> Not that that's like <laughs> surprising for uh, a MOBA, because like in uh, like Dota and like League of Legends, you buy like hats and stuff. Like that's very common in those games. You buy skins. Yeah, you don't skins. buy articles of clothing. Isn't skins Do- get you wins. Isn't Dota funny. just hats though? I thought Dota was hats. Well, I don't know anything about Dota except the, my, I have friends that play it. I don't pay that much attention, but I know in League, it's all about the skins. Are you sure you're not thinking of Fortnite? Oh no, Fortnite is for sure skins. I think Dota is hats. All right, I'm going to search on the internet. Is <laughs> Dota hats? That is kind of yes. Okay. So now this does make sense because in Dota you don't have like specific champions that you own. There's a drafting system at the beginning of the competition, so then you might want to put your hat on the particular one mm. that you draft. That makes sense. But wait, no, no, no. I've seen skins because that glowing blue ball, you can skin it as a uh, companion cube from Portal. So I think you I can only know. see that, though. No, it was on the World Championships. Oh, because I thought Dota also had voice packs where oh, you the, can... Oh, definitely, yes. You can Those change the only announcer. You can hear. Yes. You can ch- I, I have heard the Rick and Morty voice pack more times than I've ever wanted to in my entire life. <laughs> but if you watch the whole uh, the documentary about the World Championships where it was like the one guy was friends with the other guy and they had a team and then the one guy betrayed his friend and formed a new team but didn't invite his friend and then his friend created his own team and then they like recruited all these people who were no like unknowns and then came back and won the whole thing and then like won it for a couple of years that they had a skin on the little blue glowy ball so there you go there's your answer i kind of want to get the skateboard will dude get in line because it, it's going to be <laughs> there's going to be a rush on those skateboards so well the skateboards have all sold out within like an hour of being posted oh, but if within I, if less I was, than an hour buddy within 5 minutes of being posted if i was to get if I was to get any skateboard, I feel like getting the 25th anniversary skateboard is the one to get. I That would be fantastic, but I don't feel like... I mean, m- maybe I'll roll the dice. Unfortunately, it's a Tuesday, so that's going to be hard to do. Mm-hmm. But, I, I, you know, I will say, when I shipped my Toxtricity board from South Carolina to Minnesota, that I that when they asked, like, how much do you want to insure this package for? And I looked, I was like, how much is this silly toxicity board going for on ebay it was 350 dollars wow i buy two you, skateboards i flip oh, one of them be that oh. dude don't then, be that then the dude. flipping pays for the initial skateboard if you do that i will buy myself a can of lima beans and end it all right here <laughs> 
You will know it's over by me posting that horrible quote, Alolan Vulpix quote picture (laughs) as our group chat. Uh, Um, I don't think I can budget a 250. I'm assuming it's 250. Oh, it's got to be, They're 150. Are they 150? Yeah. Mm, 150 is a little easier to swallow than 250. It's $100 easier to swallow. It's $100 easier to swallow. (laughs) Okay. They also announced new Pokemon Snap. We have a release date sooner than I thought. I honestly thought this was going to be like a um, June, July, September game. Nothing comes out in August. (laughs) No. Uh, But we're getting it in April. Yeah, I'm excited. It looks good. It looks really, really good. I have my initial uh, uh, thoughts and impression on YouTube. Uh, normally, I stream like announcements like that, but I had Thursday off, so I just recorded a like eight-minute video of my thoughts of seeing the trailer for the first time. That's on youtubecom slash pkmncast. But overall, uh, it looks good. Uh, I have some ups and downs here, but I guess we'll get through the press release. In new Pokemon Snap, players will take on the role of uh, a buddy Pokemon photographer and work in the Lentil region uh, with expert Professor Mir and his assistant Rita on an ecological survey to photograph Pokemon thriving in nature. In a new trailer today, additional footage and details unveiled for the new Pokemon Snap with the April 30th launch date. New Pokemon Snap presents... Presents a fun twist on the Pokemon adventure with enchanting gameplay that lets players see some of their favorite Pokemon in a different light, says Nick Chavez from Nintendo of America, Senior Vice President of Sales and Marketing. Quote, this new game is a fun addition to a strong lineup of Pokemon titles on the Nintendo Switch. We can't wait to see everyone's pictures for the new Pokemon Snap launches on April 30th. Uh, wild Pokemon are all around and have adapted to thrive in the various na- natural expansions of the Lentil region. And they have may be seen living in groups, patrolling their territory, wandering serenely on their own, or even playing with other Pokemon species. With a careful eye and a photographer's keen sense of adventure, you'll be able to spot Pokemon lurking in all sorts of places, including um, secluded hideaways and sometimes swooping down from the sky. Players will be able to interact with Pokemon by throwing by throwing fluff fruit, a tasty fruit found across the region, to catch their attention or watch them eat. You can even use this fruit to help draw out Pokemon in a variety of situations to see how they react. These sur- 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 uh, serpendibilis opportunities. These opportunities present a special challenge. And serendipitous. Serendipitous opportunities. That's a word. Seems like a European has, word. Has been for a long time. <laughs> I mean, must met much of English did originate in Europe, so yeah. These serpendipitous opportunities present a oh, dear God. special <laughs> challenge. <laughs> and catching them on the camera will be a perfect moment that you may gain a higher score. Professor Mir will evaluate scores. Uh, Pokemon photography is evaluated based on subjects' poses how large they appear, how directly they are in the camera, and if they will fall into frame. As players take more photos to fulfill their research, they may see Pokemon look and behave in entirely new ways. Pokemon will have to... Players will have to take many photos to use the highest scores to fill out their photo decks. The untouched depths of the Lentil region may sound daunting at first, but don't worry. Explorers will hop into the Neo-1, an auto-driving vehicle that will steer them across various paths on each island, so they can free up time to focus on snapping the perfect shots. Throughout your missions, you may even get to see Pokemon looking and behaving differently than before. These special moments are memories to savior, so if you're lucky, you'll always have your trusty camera on hand to caption capture those Pokemon Some Pokemon and vegetation that players will discover will also have a special glow. These strange occurrences are only found in the Lentil region and are known as Illumina, the Illumina phenomenon. Jump into the trusty Neo 1 to uncover the mystery behind the Illumina phenomenon. And that's uh, that's it. That's the press release. Okay, there was a lot there, but uh, I'm assuming you both saw the trailer and I'm assuming you both have thoughts. Greg, you can go on this one. <laughs> I mean, I'm excited for it. I mean, there was nothing... I don't think they showed anything apart from the giant light-up Meganium that felt a lot different than the regular Snap, like the old-timey Snap. 
Um, which is fine. I, I don't think they gave a whole lot away. Uh, but I liked everything that I saw. I'm excited for it. So my only issue with, I can't say my only issue, my <laughs> issue with Pokemon Snap is when I played the first one on my Nintendo 64, I was not a kid. Right, and I didn't either. it just really did not appeal to me at all. Mm. I, I got very little pleasure out of it. And so there's like no nostalgia tick for me on this particular game. And then just the gameplay, I'll have to see it to believe it. I'm just, I, I can't get excited if it's going to be a reflection of what the past Pokemon Snap was. I think there's a lot of nostalgia around Pokemon Snap. People yeah, remember it being like well, this. For other people, yes. Sure. I mean, I have nostalgia about it. I mean, I enjoyed the game when I played it, but again, my, you know, I was, my nostalgia of it, like, I knew it was not, you know, it wasn't like this super great game that I played all the time, but I mean, it was just at the time it was another Pokemon product that I wanted to play. And I could see that the game was just a very basic loader. <laughs> like you're going to go along this path and take pictures and then slowly unlock things. And it was a very short game. And I don't really expect much more out of this game. Right. Like it didn't show anything more out of this game particular game it was just like okay you're gonna be on the exact same track taking pictures and you'll the you'll have to repeat places because you'll once again like the first one get new items to make them do new things and you still will never understand what criteria it actually uses to give you a good picture oh it's just randomized <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure calculations will be better this time the only thing i feel a little uneasy about is is it given how small the first one felt and Very that true. felt like it was pushing the price limit this is sixty dollars mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that feels a lot for how limited the very first pokemon snap was so i'm very curious how many pokemon are in it how many Only areas are in it yeah I, uh, Ugh, exactly I mean, it's a tough sell. Yeah. I mean, I'll still buy it. I still think I can get enjoyment out of it. I, I, I am really questioning the cost. Is that sort of my, my major, like, is this, is it going to look pretty enough to be worth $60? And I, I don't have that sense yet. I, I'm leaning towards no. So I, I have a lot of thoughts. Uh, they, they did say on there's new Pokemon snap dot Pokemon dot com <laughs> is a website. Yep. Uh, they do say there are over 200 Pokemon, which means uh, like 207, <laughs> right? Yeah. It, like if there was 250 Pokemon, they would say over 250 Pokemon. If there was, even if there was 220, I feel like they would probably say there's over 220 Pokemon, but it's probably like 205, 204 Pokemon. Uh, that in itself, yeah. Explore beaches, jungles, deserts, and more as you photograph over 200 Pokemon and investigate the mysterious Illumina phenomenon in the new Pokemon Snap. I think that number is low. Yep. The first game had 63 Pokemon. It was supposed to have 64 Pokemon. The Pokemon that was cut last minute was Ekans, uh, because I can't remember exactly why it was cut, but it was supposed to be Nintendo 64. There, if, if you right. don't, if you can't, if you are too young to remember Nintendo 64 games, every game had this ongoing thing of, like, we have to have a 64 reference somewhere in our game. For a Pokemon Snap, it was like, well, it's 64 Pokemon that move in around the environment. But they had to cut Ekans last minute, so it was only 63 Pokemon. Uh, which, at the time, that's like over one-third of the Pokedex. And in this case, I guess it's like one-fourth of the Pokedex. Yeah. Mm, just about. Just about. But I, 200 Pokemon is a good amount. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Going with what I agree with Greg about is a $60 game. Uh, for 200 Pokemon. This is, this is, the, yeah. this is like the, the theme of Pokemon now. It's just like, how, how many Pokemon can we cut out and still sell them a <laughs> game? How, like, can we, get the, can we get them to pay $60 for a five Pokemon game? 
Let's see if we can do it. Those suckers will buy anything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> quit now, frauds. Yeah, quit now, frauds. Like the, I think we argued about this a year ago. I think I think uh, Will didn't believe this was going to be a sixty dollars game, and I pretty much said on this podcast the Pokemon tax will make it a sixty dollars game because they that can get 100% away. One hundred percent sounds like me. Yeah, it sounds like yes. <laughs> Um, so, I was like, do you remember original Pokemon Snap? That wasn't a $60 game. <laughs> I think original Pokemon Snap was the full price of a 60, Nintendo 64 oh, oh, game, which was yes, absolutely. $49, I it. think, right? 50 bucks was Nintendo 64 games. Ara- around that, very expensive. Mm, okay, so this is, this is my... That sounds like more than I think they were. <laughs> were they 40 or were they 50? I want to say they were 40. They might have been 40. Yeah, you're right, Greg. They might have been 40, because I think GameCube was when they bumped it to 50. Yeah. And then Wii, they kept it at 50, and then Switch, they jumped it to 60. Because they made a big deal about that. Yep. Again, maybe maybe some adults don't remember their Pokemon Snap days as well as I do. I've played Pokemon Snap probably once a year, and I think that game does... Out of all the Nintendo 64 games, I do think Pokemon Snap holds up. I do think I, I do. I want to be very clear that I like Pokemon Snap. Mm-hmm. I think it's I think it is an enjoyable afternoon once a year to sit down with a friend or a nephew or your significant other and to play Pokemon Snap together. I think for what that game is, it captures that. But but beyond that, uh, I don't think Pokemon Snap was the game that was worth the full price back then. And I think they knew that. And the reason yeah. I'm uh, the reason they knew that is because they specifically partnered with Best Bu- or with Blockbuster. They put mm-hmm. the kiosk in the store because they knew that people would rent this game. Yep. And that this game was perfect for rentals because when you owned it, you realized all the flaws. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And uh, no lie, I actually rented this game from a video store, not Blockbuster, but I did I do it as a rental. I think I returned it two days later. I'm pretty sure I bought it. I probably still have it somewhere in this house. And so my worry all this time with Pokemon Snap was they knew back then that this game would be an amazing rental game. And for mm-hmm. and and it, it was. It was a re yeah, it like it was, was the thing that like if my parents were like we gotta run we gotta go to the grocery store and I'm like oh but we're gonna probably stop at Blockbuster I was like oh gosh please take me I will suffer through two hours of grocery shopping to get like five minutes of playing the Pokemon Snap kiosk and maybe convincing you to spend the five dollars so we can rent this for forty eight hours um, it was the perfect rental game because it wasn't in my opinion a a game that should have been full price. Correct. Compared to other games. So now you have a new Pokemon Snap at full price, which is, I guess, three times the amount of content. But 64, like, once you played through, po- if you own Pokemon Snap, you you were probably one of those players that could beat the entire game start to finish in, like, two hours. Yeah. And so if this is, if this ends up being six to eight hours, uh, maybe... I guess, and I'm not the type of person that's like, I need X amount of time from a video game to make it worth it. Like I played Gone Home. That's like an that's like an hour long game. It's like twenty bucks. Loved it. Played Firewatch. That's like a four hour game. Twenty bucks. Loved it. You know, Uncharted One. You get through that story like twelve hours. Sixty bucks. Loved it. So I don't have a problem paying. Sixty dollars for a short experience. If that experience is good, Pokemon right. Snap looks good. But let's not kid ourselves that the original game they knew that it was short, and they and it existed in a time where renting was a thing to do, and it was yep. a perfect rental mm-hmm. game. Yeah, which what is my worry here. There is a very unique and special shiny Pokemon that can only be obtained by completing your Poke's Pokemon's photo decks. I mean, is that worth a sixty dollars? What if it is another opportunity to get a shiny Mew? I mean, maybe that knows a special move. Maybe or has a special hidden ability. Hidden I mean, ability, shiny Mew. If you're, if well, mythical Pokemon don't have hidden abilities yet. <laughs> they yeah. will now. They will now. 
I don't think they need to attach a Pokemon to this like they did Ranger or Coliseum because they have nostalgia working for them. <laughs> This is 25th anniversary. All bets are off the table. It's time to go wild. They probably would have already said. There there are a few people that are like, uh, I, ever since this game got announced, there are a few people being like, I hope there are shiny Pokemon in it. It doesn't matter. The amount of people that would weigh $60 on whether this game has shinies or not, like that is that is such a significantly small portion of the audience. And I even think... If you already thought $60 was too much and they were like, well, you can maybe see a shiny Pokemon, I still maybe don't think you pull the trigger. There's probably one person listening being like, I'm only buying this game if they have shiny Pokemon. Yeah. But for like the general audience, like Ma or Dad walking into the store, the the the, 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 main, the main reason they're buying it is because it says Pokemon. Uh, and if you're an adult, like like the three of us are, you're either buying it or not, whether or not they have shiny Pokemon. I think shiny Pokemon would be okay. I think it would add... Oh. But Some wait, replay just, value to the just, game. You just see the shiny Pokemon. They, it's you don't get to catch them. They don't go into your Pokemon <laughs> home. Sure, sure, but it it still adds some replay value. But I think that's what the Illuminati thing is. Um, oh, the, <laughs> the Illuminati's Illuminati got Pokemon. a whole other bent on oh, uh, Pokemon twenty five. Let's just not get $60. me started on that because we don't got six hours to talk about but how I mean, the Illuminati have infiltrated the Pokemon universe. Uh uh uh. I'm way more into this game now that there are Illuminati in it. Uh, it says lentil say. Pokemon and their habits to uncover the truth about the Illumina phenomenon. So, uh, I I I think that like that is the special thing you're looking for. You probably want to re. I, I don't think I could be wrong, but I don't think every time you go through the forest level, you're going to see a shining, glowing Meganium. I think that that is probably a rare occurrence. And that is the reason you would replay through those levels. Oh, yeah. So do they need Illuminami? Illumina. Illumina. Do they need Illumina and do they need Shiny? Probably not. Because they're probably doing the same thing, which is I have a chance to get a quote unquote rarer picture going through. I don't know if 300 Pokemon, like, if they said 300 Pokemon, I think I would feel better about the $60. If they said 400 Pokemon, I think I'd feel really good. Yeah. If they well, said 810 Pokemon, I'd feel great. There there would be no way. <laughs> I mean, I just can't help. I just, it's just so hard for me. I'm excited for this game. I'm going to play it on day one. I'll spend the $60. That's not a problem. I just can't help think how does this a game exist in 2021 and not disappoint people when yeah. the original game existed in a very specific time zone? Yeah. I mean, there's a few things. Like, they're definitely relying on Nostalgia Zone. Like, they're definitely relying on people being like, I love this game because it reminds... It's, it's, it's the game that I wanted back then because it looks so much prettier. It's coming at a time, quite frankly, when... A nice, relaxing game sounds really good. Like, I think it's it's approaching that sort of Animal Crossing, just a day-to-day -day thing. The thing is, the initial buy-in is there because people are looking at it without thinking, am I going to get a lot out of this game? Like, you could play Animal Crossing. People are still playing Animal Crossing Today. Which also cost $60, Which also FYI. cost $60. I think, I think Animal Crossing to. is worth the 60 Oh, it definitely is. I think compared, if you do a comparison and say, like, baseline Pokemon's new Pokemon Snap is a $60 game, that would mean that Animal Crossing is actually a $240 game <laughs> because it gives you a reason to return every day, every right. month. It is constantly e evolving. It's engaging. It's changing. It's like, like the, the, look at the huge difference. Like, you can change your world in Animal Crossing. In Pokemon Snap, you can't change anything. Right. You just walk through and take photos. I hate taking photos. I don't. Mm, <laughs> it does. Mm. It does look like there. There's, there's a couple things. That it does look like there's a day and night cycle. Yeah. We, we don't Ooh. know if that's real time. But they couldn't even do that in the regular Pokemon <laughs> game. So I'm now I'm impressed. Okay, Sword and Chill has a day and night cycle. So I get carried away here. When you're when you're done with the game. When yeah. you're done with the game, it doesn't lock. It does look like the Poke the the photo decks. Sorry, I almost said Pokedex. The photo decks can tell the difference between genders. 
So you might, we don't know yet, but you might be able to take a picture of a male APOM and be like, ah, I haven't found the female APOM yet. So wait, so is that what they mean by more than 200 Pokemon? Is it's actually 200 Pokemon and then variant gender? Uh, <laughs> I mean, possibly. they did show Hippowdon. Maybe the f- second time you go through the desert area, you see a male one instead of a female one. Hmm. The thing is, is like, here's where I'm at. If it was a $30 game, it would be an absolute home run at like no questions buying it, playing the heck out of it. As we get further away from that point, I feel less, I feel less likely that I'm going to actually buy this game. Like, almost every Pokemon game for me is I pretty much just buy it period. And I'm getting to the point where I have a lot of things competing for my time. Mm -hmm. Correct. And something that promises the same level and potentially the same shortness of gameplay that the first one did is not my go-to. Like, I will most likely watch people play it and think, "Do am I getting like... If you're streaming it, will I get as much enjoyment out of watching you stream it as me playing it? I need somebody to travel back in time 25 years <laughs> and ask them to like, just like shift it one year forward or one year back. And let's not have this in the same year that a new Monster Hunter game is coming out on Switch, please. I think this is going to be a game where people love it for a week, maybe a month, and then they're yes. done with it. Yes, exactly. And I think that's fine. My worry is just that there is not enough there. And maybe if they have uh, like online leaderboards where you can see. No, there will be no online. I know there won't. I know there won't. There won't be any online leaderboards, but it would like they did say here on the website, there will be a way to share your photos. Yeah, you upload it to Twitter. You hit, like no, everything yeah, you, else you you hit the little photo button on your Switch controller. <laughs> exactly, yes. Look, this game will be worth $60 to me if there's a level where there's a pyramid with a glowing eye at the top of it. And if you can whisper George Washington was replaced by a doppelganger and it opens up like a whole new reality, <laughs> then yes, the Illuminati have won and I'm in. I just hope that there's something a little bit more. And I think there will be. There's usually in Pokemon games, there's always one or two things they, they like hold back. It looks great. I think it will be fun. But 60 bucks, 200 Pokemon, and really, really banking on nostalgia is is worrisome. Not a deal breaker, yeah. just worrisome. And And I saw a couple people being like, Again, this is just an expectation thing. We've had this with Sword and Shield. We have this with other Pokemon games. But people are like, well, they could just do DLC. They could. They they could. What if they just made a good game to begin with? <laughs> like, like, yeah, they could do DLC. But who's to say you're even going to enjoy what they put out initially? Uh, I just, I, I, I can't even think about DLC for a game that isn't even out that I haven't even played. It's just, why are we thinking so far ahead? It's just the same frustration I get when, and I've told this story before, but the day Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee came out, we're playing it on Twitch, twitch.tv slash pkmncast, we're having a good time, we're catching the Weedles, we're battling the Brocks, we're going through Mount Moon, and the not even exaggerating, the day Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee came out, over a dozen people came into my Twitch chat and said... When do you think the next Pokemon game is coming out? (laughs) Buddy, I'm playing it right now. It came out six hours ago. It wasn't, it wasn't enough. It wasn't, it was Diet Coke. It was, it wasn't. (laughs) People just get so ahead of themselves with, with everything in life, but specifically with like Pokemon and video games. It's like, what if there's DLC for Pokemon Snap? Yeah, maybe. What if Pokemon Snap? What if we just wait and see if Pokemon Snap's a good game <laughs> first? <laughs> because if you don't like it, your DLC argument's going out the window. What if there's DLC for Mario Kart and all my friends have already stopped playing? Hmm. It looks really good. I believe the people making Pokemon Snap were the same people who made Pokemon Tournament, right? I believe that is oh, the case. Then the art will be good. There you go. 
uh, developed by Bandai Namco. Yeah, which is the same yeah. as Pokémon Tournament. Ooh, they make Katamari Damacy. Mm, maybe you can. Maybe there's a unlock version where cross you cross it over. Heck where you can yeah. roll up all the Pokémon. This will be featured on uh, my podcast. Sweet. They did say over 200 Pokemon, and in the uh, on the website they show three different Vivian forms. Will? Yeah. Of that's, all uh, the people who have and have not collected multiple video- Vivian forms, I am on the. I have not collected anything more than what was handed to me. So, are they counting like the 18 yep. forms of Vivian? They part are. of the 200. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> probably. Get, get yes. a little worried. <laughs> Yeah, I I mean, I am 50-50 on the fence whether I'm buying the game. I'm excited for it in in that I really want to watch people play it. And if it looks really good, then I might want to play it myself. Because um, I actually think this is good content to watch. <laughs> <laughs> and not well, it was, like, it was good content on the Nintendo 64 to watch. But that was before yeah. Twitch. That was yeah. where you go to Blockbuster... You rent the game for $5, you go through the beach level, it takes you, what, like five minutes to go through it, maybe four minutes, and then you get your pictures, and then you hand the controller to your, your somebody else in the house, they do the same level, they get two pictures better than you, and you now have the option of like, do I want to go back through beach because I want my photos to win, or do I want to go to cave? Like, that's how you played Pokemon Snap. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how you got the longevity out of it for the 48 hours you rented it before you sent it back to Blockbuster. And then when you rented it from Blockbuster two weeks later, you're like, well, it's been two weeks. I guess I start off with Beach. Uh, <laughs> and then I go to Cave. And then I go to River. <laughs> and then I yeah. go to, uh, what was the, Valley, I think was the Valley, next Valley, was it? Valley. Maybe. I think at the end of the day, I will get my $60 out of it. I'll play it for a week. It'll be good. And then I it will probably end up with Pokemon Quest, which was I played it for a week. I absolutely adored it for the week, but I haven't played Quest since. Man, I could never defeat the final boss in that game. I didn't get very far in Quest. But also Quest was a much cheaper game. Yeah, it was free. And if you really liked it, you yep. could give it 20 bucks. <laughs> Yeah, I sort of feel like maybe that's the route they should have taken with this. I mean, maybe they'll put out a demo and I'll play the demo and see if I like it. Yeah, we. I mean, we can't tell until we touch it. Yeah, I don't. Right? I, I, it, it's very. It 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 looks pretty. I disagree with a bunch of people who are saying that it doesn't. I just don't. Having played the other game, I don't know that there's the same people complaining about the know. graphics are probably the same people playing Minecraft. What do I they mean, care true. about graphics? They're building eight bit blocks with look. Nobody with plays Minecraft, Minecraft anymore. We play Roblox now. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, true, true, true. Get with the times, dude. True, 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 true. I mean, the twenty fifth anniversary image is amazing. Uh, yeah, it's good. I really like that. I like the fact that they pulled the like the one thing that was introduced, <laughs> whether you liked it or not. In each, poor Unova is there in their musical outfits. Just sitting out there, the thing that nobody Hey, liked. I enjoyed putting little clothing I outfits on my Pokemon. I mean, musical made sense for it being New York, but Oshawa's not so happy with that topic. <laughs> Oshawa's not happy with anything. I know. Oshawa's just... All right, we're going a little long today, so we're going to jump to Pokemon of the Week. Road! Oh, good gracious. Do I even have the software open to run Pokemon of the Week? I do, but I didn't. Oh, dag nab it. All right, last week's Pokemon. <laughs> Number one, people complain about my accent, which I really have little control over. <laughs> people don't complain about it. Just, no, I literally got a complaint from someone. Um, Related to uh, the what one reference was the Pokemon that's related to Unova's throw. Who would that be, Greg? Sock. Sock. That's right. And then I made a reference to when I uh, did the whole thing about um, Tagnabbit. Volibi evolves into where my brain is lost. <laughs> Vol- Volibi in, into Mandibuzz. 
and I had the whole reference to the to the word. What is the word? Mandible? Buzzard? No. Buzzard Hawk. is buzzard is used to refer to vultures in this country and hawks. Yes. yes. Sawk, hawk. Sawk is a fighting type. Hawk is a type of bird. And then I also brought up the wrestling team, Enzo Amore and Big Cass, because they're known for saying soft, S-A-W-F-T. Now, here we go. Fighting type, a hawk, and wrestling. What, what Pokemon does that make you think of? It's... Knocked Owl. Oh, what mm. a clever little knocked owl. <laughs> It's Halucha! Halucha, that's right! And I don't want to name names, but somebody in my Twitter DM said, I can't think of a hawk Pokemon, and I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's not the person whose favorite Pokemon is Halucha. When I was... Uh, no, no, but it's somebody who's a big fan of wrestling. When I was mm. doing uh, Player's Cup 3... There was a team I fought that had a Zatu. Oh, right. I saw that one. And well, I was so worried because I didn't know what Zatu did. I mean, they had a pretty standard team. Like, they had, like, Pokemon I recognized. And I was like, okay, this Pokemon does this. This Pokemon does this. This Pokemon does this. And then they just had a Zatu. And I was like, do I... mean, I it really wrecks fl- fighting types. I was like, do I... <laughs> Do I attack the Zatu first? Do I leave? I don't know what the Zatu does. <laughs> it's, uh, but uh, the Zatu didn't get to do anything, unfortunately. I, I think I, I faked out the Zatu, and then I attacked its partner, and then I attacked the Zatu next. But the, that's, the, that's the thing with competitive. Sometimes you're just like, oh. I've never fought a Zatu. I don't know. What, I don't even know its moveset. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it sets up Tailwind if Zatu has Tailwind. Yeah, I don't know if Zatu has Tailwind. <laughs> you mean you never did find out what it was supposed to do? Yeah, I never, right? I never found out what it was supposed to do. Uh, it's like uh, it's like those uh, rogue decks in TCG will where they they pull out a card and you're like, can I read that? Because uh... <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no one's ever actually played that card against me. So can I uh, can I please read what that card does? <laughs> uh, Zatu does learn Tailwind. I feel like we've had Halucha be Pokemon of the Week. Yes, I'm running out of ideas, folks. Maybe next week can be Zatu. No, I've already <laughs> written next week, and it is definitely not Zatu. Unfortunately, it's Knocked Out. <laughs> what a clever little Knocked Out. All right, shuffle icon, Greg, and then let's move forward. Uh, shuffle icon for Halucha. If I remember correctly, let me back to the page. It's good. I mean, I think it's. I think it's one of the ones that's really good. It even had a shiny shuffle icon. Did it's it? hard. It's hard to do a bad Hualucha. That is yeah. like a general. It's missing one thing, but generally, otherwise, it's a pretty good Pokemon all around. Yeah, I mean, apart from the fact that it always looks mad, I like both. I like, I like the lighter color of the shuffle over the Trozy. The Trozy one's sort of more flat. So I like the fact that the shuffle also has a shiny. Like, it's a good shuffle icon. It's also a good shiny. It is a good shiny. It's it's a vibrant change, and I'm into that. All right. This week's Pokemon of the Week. I I thought I was going easy on folks. I don't know. Maybe I am have gone easy. Maybe this is going to be a tough one. I, I don't live in your head. I can't tell you <laughs> how you're going to respond to this. Here we go. Think back to Kanto. One Pokemon evolution line matches what happens in the real world. One does not. One Pokemon evolution line changes type combination for its final evolution. One stays the same throughout. One of these got a Gigantamax form. One of them got a Mega Evolution. One of these is a version exclusive, and that is the one we will think about today. Which Pokemon has 14 feet, a party hat, and a clown nose, and also shows up in Pokemon Go way too much? There you go. All right. There's a lot this episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Thanks for making it to the end. Oh, uh, we can proudly announce that the Pokemon of 20... I was going to say, I was going to get real mad. One, and how we got to that is on YouTube now. 
uh, youtube.com slash pkmncast. But we did it. We spent like 90 minutes debating over Pokemon. We cut that down to 40 minutes for the YouTube version. But your 2021 Pokemon of the year is Cryogonal. Cryogonal? Cryogonal. Cryogonal. Yeah, see how no one's happy, so that means we made the right choice. <laughs> I, I like Cryogonal I mean, quite like a bit. Cry- it's one of my it's 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 up there in my yeah. faves. Good, it's a good, good one. A good Unova standard bearer right it's there. It's the year of the Bryson man. Everybody give up your careers and go to movie acting. That's what it is. It's you. Given up a useful career to become a TikTok artist. You should be happy. That's, that is it, right? You we, should be happy. We, that, we are that in this the is gig the economy of, uh, y- yes, the, the, you have to sell yourself on TikTok. Mm-hmm. That is how the, the, the only way left of making money in this country. Maybe by the end of 2021, I'll be able to say it correctly. No. Probably not. Doubtful. No. Nope. I mean, try Marcatus again. <laughs> <laughs> um, YouTube.com slash PKMNCast, Twitch.com slash PKMNCast, uh, TikTok.com slash PKMNCast, Instagram, PKMNCast. You get, you get the point. Twitter uh, as well. Uh, Reddit.com slash Super Effect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You get you get it until you get to Reddit, because Reddit, like everything else. We do garbage. have Reddit.com slash PKMNCast. It just redirects to super effective, so not the worst. I had to cover our bases. Anyways, thank you for listening. Uh thank you for supporting on Patreon. If you do support on Patreon, we've been running a couple extra Patreon. Normally I only run one Patreon ad a month, but we've been running a couple extra just because beginning of the year, good time to get in. Um, really good opportunity to do a year long subscription because it's only like twenty bucks um, instead of like the two dollars a month. Save save a couple bucks. Uh, thank you for listening. We'll be back next week, of course. Uh, Greg is at White Wing on Twitter. Will is at Wash in the Sink. I am at Dragging a Lake. Otherwise, this has been another episode of the Pokemon Podcast, and we are. Super effective. Super 25th anniversary countdown. It could also be Super Snap, but I'm not sold on Snap being the ending because I don't know that's going to be a very good game. Yeah, no. This podcast is supported by our Patreon backers. If you would like to support on Patreon, you can head over to ise.cash to support us. A shout out to our producers of this episode. Starting with Catherine, Courtney, Kay, Matthew, Jetsy, Patrick, Bovine, Casey, Brady, Steph, Brian, Stephen, and Kevin, and our executive producers of Spencer and Anthony. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for listening. Thank you for making it to the end. And have a great rest of your week. <laughs>